Looks like uh, good. And it looks like then we are good to go. Hello and welcome to Fridays at 5, Update 30, Preview Edition. Thanks for joining me. I am DDO's Community Manager, Carter Van, and I've got some devs with me today. We're here to answer your questions, show you a little bit about our anniversary patch, Update 30, and uh, just have a whole bunch of fun here. So let me do some introductions. First up here, we have Executive Producer Severlin with us. How you doing? Hey. Very cool. Uh, also, Steel Star. We have got SC Trader. SC Trader. There you go. Sorry. sorry. <laughs> SC Trader. Uh, E-commerce. DDO store guy. You've been seeing us post on the uh, weekly sales lately and uh, doing a lot more work for the DDO team here. And then also, uh, finally, we have Knockback. Hello, guys. Happy anniversary. Lore guy extraordinaire. And uh, we're here to preview the gnome, show you the anniversary patch, uh, which will be on the money, if not already, very soon. Um, and that should be running through the weekend here as well. I can tell you uh, we are targeting February 29th for the release of Update 30. So uh, next Friday at this time we'll be doing, we'll be about halfway through our day-long 10th anniversary live stream party extravaganza. Then that Monday, first off, we're going to be doing Update 30 here on the live servers. Subject to change, of course, but that's the plan is to get it out on Update 30. Why don't we start off a little bit by talking about the gnome. We have both a regular gnome and an iconic gnome. And uh, why don't we start with the non-iconic. So to start off with, why are we bringing the gnome to DDL? It's the last race that, from the player's handbook that hasn't been in. I have a particular fondness for deep gnomes. And uh, because we also wanted a race with some different Bonuses. Yeah. Cool. And this is really the, one of the last core races of 3.5 that we don't have in. So, very nice. All right. Uh, so, they do have some unique beards and unique noses. Very gnome like. They have their own kind of mouths that are a little bit different as well. I'm just kind of clicking through the random button so you can see some of the uh, wide variety of gnomish characters that you might create. These are the regular gnomes. They do have a plus two inherent bonus to their intelligence and a minus two inherent bonus to their strength. Yeah, to their strength. Uh, the iconics get an, uh, will be a little bit different, and we could talk about them in just a little bit. Uh, what else should people know about the gnomes? Uh, they're, a they're a little bit smaller than halflings, and they come with their own enhancement trees. We can actually talk a little bit about the enhancement trees in a little bit, but um, I guess. What makes the gnome special? What is it that makes the gnome shine? Uh, as somebody noted in chat, they have great mustaches. <laughs> That's so. true, they do. Yeah. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, I think, you know, they're, they're a key intelligence race, so if you want to have a maxed out intelligence class, they're a good one. The uh, Like I said, the iconic, which we'll get to in a little bit, also has the option of wisdom. Um, I think that there are often considered to be tinkers on the Eberron side, wizards on the Faerun side. Um, yeah, and, and, yeah, and building for those specific classes, you're going to find some, some synergies for both of those. Do they get big hats? No, these are D&D &D gnomes. These are not <laughs> garden gnomes. These are not the kind of things you'd find in Mount Horror, Wisconsin. But... Uh, <laughs> Horror, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> get, hey, you got to get your Mount Horror joke in there, right? Uh, no travel website gnomes. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> and I'll show you the female here as well. This is the female regular gnome. Uh, they too have their own sort of unique looks that you can do. I'm going to say uh, these are both the regular gnome and the iconic gnome are going to be free to VIPs. So uh, even the iconic is going to be free to VIP thanks to our 10th anniversary here. And they will be available in the available in the DDO store as well, which is sort of one of the reasons you're here, SC Trader. Why don't you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so we're going to price uh, the uh, Iconic Gnome and the Gnome Race both at twelve ninety five. dollars some of you may have seen on um, Lamania already, um, and that kind of aligns with our previous Iconics. And uh, yeah, so that's, as you guys have seen, that's the, the pricing we're going to go with. Cool. All right, I am switching over to the Deep Gnome. By default, the path is an Earthen Illusionist, although you are, of course, welcome to customize it as much as you would like to. Just checking your chat real quick. 
Uh, this will be our second Lamania build. Like I said, I was, I've was i actually been getting ready for the live stream, so I don't know the current status on Lamania, but we're in the process of getting it open for the weekend here. So if it's not up as we speak, it will be shortly. So what makes the Deep Gnome different from the regular Gnome? Well, for one, they have an inherent bonus to both Intelligence and Wisdom, and a minus two penalty to both Strength and Charisma. So we've long heard of people having an interest in a inherent wisdom-based class, and now you've got it with the iconic Deep Gnome here. Uh, they do, by default, are a wizard, so one level of wizard, which you can, you know, respect out as you wish. But, um, you know, you can just do that with a plus one heart of wood if you want. What else should we say about the iconic Gnome? Uh, like most of our other iconics, uh, the Deep Gnome iconic is a Forgotten Realms character. Uh, much like the, the Purple Dragon Knight of the Morning Lord, you start uh, in Maloon, uh, able to advance directly to level 15 if you'd like, uh, which is just perfect for taking on the Maloon content or some of the other nice level 15 content. It's a good place to just jump right in. Uh, their tree, uh, their enhancement tree, which we'll get to in a little bit, uh, it's somewhat similar to the Ever Unknown, but they have a few key differences and, and uh, little flavorful pieces that are, are a little bit different. All right, I'm going to call up the uh, Deep Gnome Enhancement Tree here. Uh, we did go through that in detail on last Wednesday's weekly Wednesday lunchtime live stream. So if you want to go enhancement to enhancement and learn all the nitty-gritty details, you can watch last Wednesday's live stream. But in general, the Deep Gnome gets a core enhancement to dodge and uh, magic resistance rating, while the regular gnome gets one for dodge and use magic device. Yes. And uh, then, of course, the deep gnome has a uh, chance for both intelligence and wisdom to boost that in the second and fourth yep. core trees, whereas, whereas the regular gnome is uh, strictly intelligence. If, if you're building on the, uh, the wizard uh, path that is yep. default for the deep gnome, that intelligence is going to come in rather handy. If you instead want to build something that's more wisdom-based, well, you have that option, too. Both uh, both racial enhancement trees do have gnomish weapon training. That gives them a plus to hit and damage with light weapons, which does include things like light hammers, short swords, and repeating crossbows. Um, and uh, they do get some SLAs in particular as well in their enhancement tree. Um, what SLAs do they both get? Just the Deep Gnome gets Phantasm Killer, right? right? Just yeah. the Deep Gnome gets yeah. Phantasm Killer. Cool. Uh, there's a few other unique abilities in there. I believe they get a, quite a bit of spell power, or sorry, spellcraft skill, which translates in a lot of ways to spell power and a lot of kinds of spell power uh, that the regular gnome doesn't get, uh, as well as a uh, unique rock throwing ability. That's true. Uh, they both do also have an option of permanent blur as well in yes. tier two, so that's kind of a nice um, one. There. Both gnome, uh, both types of gnomes have uh, some history in pen and paper of illusion spells, and so that's represented somewhat in both trees. Cool. All right. Uh, so, SC Trader, if I want to buy a gnome, how much am I going to have to pay for it? Uh, the gnome race uh, is twelve ninety five for rank points in the store. Uh, free to VIPs, uh, but yeah, twelve ninety five in the store. Cool. All right. I'm just checking our chat. Hearing gnome chatter. Uh, at the moment, we do not have, someone asked about a bundle for both of them. Uh, the bundle ability is not currently in the current version of the DDO store, so they are being sold separately. Hey, someone got my Mount Horror joke. Cave the mountains. <laughs> All right. Nice going. Uh, let's see. All right, sounds good. So let's, uh, I guess, move over a little bit to this anniversary dungeon here. This is really, for some of you, maybe your first chance to take a look at this. This is available right now on Lamania, or will be very soon. Probably by the time you watch this, it certainly will be, unless you're joining us live. So we're getting a little nuts, aren't we, on this anniversary dungeon? Well, we're going to... Go to a party where you're going to see lots of things uh, you've seen before in DDO. Everyone's invited to the party. Uh, see, Noah uh, is our first gnome NPC. She's standing next to the challenge board. This is a challenge, so you can play it from level 1 to level 35. Um, and 
the Coin Lords are putting on a party to commemorate the anniversary of the founding of Stormreach. The problem is some of the Kobolds have decided to stage a little insurrection and they're uh, screwing up the party. And when you come in, you'll see a uh, Kobold you, you know well, Scrag, who is the, co the Kobold who helped with the dogs in the harbor. And he wants you to stop the fighting between the people and the kobolds. And he wants you to go, go in and talk to Harbor Master Zen. And, and apparently there's something called the Dark Overlord who is stirring up the kobolds. And he wants you to look into that. So this is going to be, you said, level 1 to 35, similar in some ways to the way the Night Revels dungeons were set up. It right. uses a similar challenge tech. And a similar reward tech, too, in regard to sort of how you get your stuff from the quest. Can no one of you speak on that at all? So, yes. When you complete the quest, you'll get party favors. And those party favors can be turned in for loot uh, from Tolero. And Tolero is sitting outside uh, the dungeon. Um, you get stars for doing the challenge. You get one star for completing the challenge. And you get four additional stars, one each from killing... Four different devs. Which is kind of funny if you're looking at the optional screen right now. It says, defeat Severlin, defeat Cordovan, me, defeat Seal Star, and <laughs> defeat Vark Wheel. Uh, so I can, uh, what you're saying is for the first time in 10 years, I can actually help you get loot. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> yeah. Correct. And he will, Cordovan will help you get loot by killing him. <laughs> yeah. the best of both worlds. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> the dungeon is very much tongue in cheek, too. Yep. It's a throwback to many things that we love about a DDL and has a lot of guest appearances. Lots of guest appearances. You can see uh, the Lord of Stone and the Lord of Eyes there uh, playing a game with Elminster, which looks suspiciously like Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, what about that, huh? Yeah. All right, so I'm moving on from the uh, flavor stuff to actually get a little bit more. You'll see there's basically a lot of NPCs uh, throughout here, and you'll want to check out the NPC text You, you might want to go back and check on uh, Talbron and Salimus. It's over here. Yeah. Malisha's there. And Malisha. What's Malisha doing there? <laughs> uh, and if you'll notice, there's an empty uh, chair there. Uh, the empty chair is for Jeets, who's gone missing. Yeah, where is Jeets, huh? All right, so I'm going to show you a little bit uh, about the kobold infestation. We kind of don't want to spoil a lot of this, because so much of what you're going to experience here is, you know, something you're not going to want to spoil on, on a uh, live stream. Here, and I'll so. point out, uh, this dungeon isn't finished yet. Uh, there's still a bunch of work that's going to go into it. It's going to be a lot more festive when it's done, uh, and there'll be more surprise appearances and little DDO in jokes yep. to come. <laughs> so we're fighting some of the kobolds who have set up shop in uh, in this particular area, well known for for crashing parties. Right. So this is the same <laughs> area as party crashers, except now the kobolds have uh, <laughs> occupied it, and they've taken all the house fjarling <laughs> illusions and replaced them with kobold illusions. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right. Um, someone's noticing uh, about uh, Elminster actually being uh, in the area, right? So. Yes. Uh, well, you know, it was a long journey, but he managed to make it. Yep, yep. Uh, and indeed, we were just talking to the folks from Wizards of the Coast about that earlier today. Yep, indeed. All right, so I'm going to uh, move, play just a little bit more and answer one of the questions in chat. I'm using, I'm going to kind of cheat my way through here by basically killing everything as I run by it, just so I can get a little bit uh, closer to, to where I want to show you stuff. So, uh, as you can see, there is no longer the normal statues that you might have. The kobolds are crashing the party. And... Uh, We'll, we'll kind of explain more about how and why that's happening here uh, for those of you who run the quest. Like I said, I don't want to spoil too much here, so we're going to wrap things up in just a little bit. But I did want to answer the question, which is, what about the other divs? Are they going to try to kill us as well? And the answer to that is yes, very much so. <laughs> 
Uh, you'll actually need devs in a variety of contexts here. There's, as I said, there's the four uh, named optionals. There are some other devs who will try to kill you. There's some other devs you can just talk to. Uh, I'm in there, for example, uh, as somebody you can just talk to, as is, no worries. Yep. And some others. All right, so before we wrap things up on the quest here, I'm just going to pop into this one area, turn off the smite, and wrap things up here with our last teaser, which is that, uh, yes, he will be killed by a whole bunch of devs. <laughs> <laughs> got Nyak and Keeper, uh, we've got Mad Floyd in there, and a uh, whole bunch of people. Right, so if you've been following the DDO forums closely over the over the years, you'll recognize some of these names. Uh, <laughs> and they're killing me, so I guess I'm going to have to... Did you get uh, Glenn or... Uh, no, I think Glenn and Elijah are on the other side there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they are. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Elijah's got the uh, thing. Flimsy. Yeah, Solarian. There's a whole bunch, whole bunch here. So, like I said, we're not going to spoil the actual dev fights or any of that sort of thing. We want to leave leave uh, quite a bit of surprise, including a whole bunch of story, which we're not going to cover here. So, I think I'm going to head back out to House Fee Arlen. There we go. So uh, when we're done here, there's going to be uh, basically a, a turn in rewards thing here. Um, and you'll get, I don't think this is actually set, right? I mean, for one, all uh, it's broken. Are you looking at Tolero? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, Tolero does have some stuff in there right now. I have been told that there will be more stuff in there in the future. But you talk to her to turn in your party favors. Nice. And, you know, similar to the way it um, it worked for Night Rebels. You'll see some things for some reason on this build on Flame Keep. All of our loot's broken. <laughs> that was it? Yeah. yeah. We'll have to fix that. <laughs> All right. Um, let's see. So, that is one of the things that you're going to see. You will see as well an anniversary token collector. Hmm, what could that be about? A genie. Huh? A genie. We've given out uh, things that involve genies in years past. So, just saying, if you uh, have an interest in getting free stuff like in years past, you might want to take some of the same actions that you have done in years past regarding rolling up characters. Okay. But I can tell you for sure that everything is bound to character on this uh, this year's reward. So unless you're going to actually play the thing, you probably have no use to actually roll up a character. Uh, let's see. Will there be a gnome house uh, in Eberron's side? Uh, we, not with update 30 here. Uh, we, I don't know that we have any immediate plans to add, say, a new house to Eberron. No, you'll, yeah. you'll see, at, at the very least, a reference in the name of the dragon marked house uh, of Sinus, uh, but not, uh, no new house ward at this time. Yeah. Uh, so the devs are NPCs, or it is a dungeon keeper style control. Uh, basically, there some of us are NPCs, and some of us are actually going to try to kill you, like uh, Severlin and me and Farguil and that sort of thing. You'll defeat us. How about devs from days past? We put as many devs as we could cram in there, pretty much. So uh, let's see. And a whole bunch of other, and like I said, NPC dialogue and that that I didn't want to spoil. But you're going to want to yeah. keep an eye on uh, and read some of that NPC text. Uh, and, it's quite nice. And just so. to emphasize, uh, the dungeon isn't done yet. So if you see it on Lania, there will be more, more party guests coming soon. Yep, yep. Uh, so my understanding of class enhancement pass, uh, Technical 13 says, is we are moving away from them in favor of being able to work on specific trees that need more work regardless of what class they are. Please correct me if I am wrong, DDO stream. Uh, we basically mentioned that, a, geez, a couple months ago, right, where we're moving away. Well, we're not really set, and nothing is set in stone regarding sort of uh, the, quote, class passes. You know, we're going to do some as time permits. We're going to do some... Uh, more substantially, some of them like what we're seeing with the uh, our Kano technician here in update 30. You know, a little bit uh, more kind of 
smaller batches at once. Is that fair enough to say? Yeah, yep. I'm working on so, fighter now. Yep. So yep. you may see some fighter things in that. Uh, the answers. Rothko45 says, are the anniversary rewards a random system this year? Uh, no. 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 no, you can uh, choose. The yes. exact opposite this year. Uh, you can spend your party favors on whatever you want, and you can spend your uh, anniversary token on whatever you want. Yep. Just showing off the little dance here. So well, actually, that's a good point as any. Why don't we just sort of announce it? If now's a great time to do some Q&A stuff. Uh, I will say we do have some other things that are coming here with our update 30 pass. Uh, we do have, you know, the Arcano Technician, some changes going in there. Uh, the Arcane Archer is getting an AOE Light Blast enhancement. Uh, we're going to have uh, volume control on party chat. That's been just one of those requests that has been around forever. And we were able to get it in. So when you're in a party, you're going to be able to adjust the volume both up and down of various members in your party. Uh, we're also going to be doing some work regarding the, the Osomium stuff that you'll see. Uh, we have a request to add a search function to the Create Edit LFM UI as we have 437 quests and 27 challenges. So I assume, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. That's a, I'm sure that that would be a nice thing. No, no immediate plans to announce that at this point. Uh, Quinfer and uh, Cladian One ask, how long will this event last? We have said that this is a, a uh, non-permanent thing. So have we given it any thought as to how long we want it to go? I don't know. I believe it was supposed to last through March. Yeah, through March, something yeah. like that. So stay tuned, I guess, is what we'll, uh, we'll say on that. Uh, let's see. Uh, does the Osomium change mean that Control D will no longer work? Uh, I believe the answer to that is yes. Uh, for those who have, uh, very few of you who have uh, used Control D, which was the old My DDO browser window that now puts up a 404 error. Error for those who use that to say access another web page, which was you had to do a little trickery work to get that working. But I know a few of you did. Yes. And the reason for the reason we're getting rid of that unused browser is that it clears. It's part of the Yosomium uh, clear up there. So we had done a poll on the players' council, for example, and said, "How many of you actually use this thing?" And the answer was pretty much nobody. I think we had one person. So I know you do technical thirteen. <laughs> Clearly. Uh, let's see. Is there content coming out with the gnome? Yes, that would be this anniversary dungeon here. Um, for update 30. All right. Will the rewards get put onto every character regardless if they log on during anniversary time? My suggestion, as always for this, is that yes, you will want to, I believe you need to log in, right, to get the item usually, because it uh, versions in on um, yes, login. Yes, but I'm not yeah. I believe it versions on. So yeah. if you yeah. even if you log in after the anniversary, you'll get the token. Yeah. The issue is though, if the event is turned off, you'll and you've have never the token, but you won't be able to turn it in. Correct. Yeah, right, there so, you go. So you'll have to wait for the next time the, the event yeah. is turned off. So if you want the reward, log in on the character. There you go. Um any news on the producer's letter? Uh, we'll have one later on uh, this spring year. You know, we're, we're, like we said in the first one, we're kind of targeting quarterly on that sort of thing. Uh, let's see. Uh, dance 2, please. You want me to do Dance 2? <laughs> All right, I can do Dance 2. I was just thinking, I actually need to roll up a, uh, a regular gnome here so that I can show you. Let's see. Uh, how long will the event be on? Like I say, stay tuned. Um, but it's going to be a while. Going to be a while. All right. When will guild ranks be fixed? Adding more ranks to the guild like what was in the old guild. Uh, that was, you mean the one where we had customized ranks for a couple of days. Uh, and then it didn't work, so we had to pull it. So I don't think we have any plans to add additional guild ranks at this time. That's an old one, but uh, I know that we've we've had that request uh, over the years. 
Is it true that this year's update will concentrate on the Forgotten Realms? If so, any lore hints as to where we will be going? Uh, can't give any more lore hints at this time for future stuff. All right, I'm going to actually quick roll a uh, regular gnome. Actually, do they both have the deep gnome and regular gnome? Are they the same dances? No. Well, that, male and female dances are different. Sorry, very male and female dances are different, but I think okay. they are possibly the same across gnomes. Yes. Okay. So I need to roll up a male gnome here real quick. There we go. I'm going to call him Dancing. <laughs> uh, let's, let's see. I've seen it mentioned on the forums, Quinfer says, mm -hmm. does DDO ever plan on going into other worlds in D&D, for example, Ravenloft? Uh, like I said, we can't... No, it's not the kind of time that we would make such an announcement like that. Um, yeah, we, we can't yeah. comment on that, but I will point out that... Temple of Elemental Evil is someplace that isn't the Forgotten Realms or uh, Eberron. <laughs> nice. <laughs> what form of genetic engineering led to the Gnome Project? Uh, don't know. <laughs> uh, but they are their own individual uh, race. You know, the art team sort of made them separate. So. The real reason we made gnomes is to put to rest the nasty rumor that Tasty hams were in fact made out of gnomes. <laughs> nice. <laughs> we didn't want to add genetic to gnomes because then we would, we would get genomes. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> that, was, that was perhaps a, a, poor, a poor pun. <laughs> no, that was a good, great pun. Yeah. All right, uh, let's let's take another maybe five minutes of questions here and see what kind of stuff we might get. <laughs> so if you have a question, ask it now. We would love to get any questions you might have. Uh, what else could we say? What else do we have coming for the DDO store? We do have actually some new creature companions we could talk yeah, about. Yeah, we're going to put in uh, versions of the Iron Defenders, um, similar looking to what the Artificers have, um, but uh, a little smaller and just kind of a nice cosmetic. A uh, couple variations of those, uh, and those will be coming in with uh, Update 30 as well. Yep, there's three variations. There's uh, gold, silver, and a house cannon in Gorgas. Live your dreams of being an Artificer with three Iron Defenders following you. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, will we ever get Dragonborn for an iconic race? Uh, nothing to announce there. Will the Dirty Dexter? I've been struggling with this myself. I knew I was going to have to say this out loud at some point. Is Verf Neblin? Verf Neblin? Verf Neblin? Neblin. Yeah. I was trying to say this earlier today and failing entirely. Do they have a reduced point value on character creation like Drow, say, no. regarding 32 points? The answer to that is no. Yeah. Uh, can we get another artificer tree? I don't know. What do you think? No, As nothing to announce. Move forward, it's yeah. on the list of things we'd like to do. Yep, yep. Uh, nothing to announce regarding, say, server consolidation. South is. I've seen a couple of comments in chat, people asking about that. Uh, if we do make a decision in that regard, we'll make sure to announce it with plenty of time there. We do have a data center move coming. Oh, that's true. We do have a data center move coming. We're currently targeting sort of first half of March. So first half of next month for the uh, data center move there. Um, stay That'd tuned for more specific information on yeah. that. Yeah, That would be good. Mm -hmm. It'll allow we'll yep. a new data center with more modern hardware. Yep. Uh, Edgerine says, how about the changes to Enlightened Spirit during this whole aura change? Could we possibly see a melee warlock like Tabletop with Hideous Blow? Uh, I don't know that we have any plans to retake a look at Enlightened Spirit at this point, but if you would like to make a suggestion as to ways that we should change it, uh, we'd be happy to see that on the forums. Gary782 says, will Otto's boxes ever be permanent in the DDO store? I don't, I'd you say don't plans no plans for that. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, when can we deconstruct the new loot uh, in Kenneth Crafting? The answer to that is update 30. Now, with this update here, we are going to be able to deconstruct Kenneth, uh, the new random gen loot in Kenneth Crafting. Uh, the new Kenneth Crafting overhaul itself has been sort of shoved, uh, moved a little bit uh, out of update 30 due to uh, time reasons and such. But uh, the deconstruction of new random gem loot is going to be in for update 30. Um, what was the reasoning behind shifting the racial bonuses to saves and AC to the enhancement tree for the Swerf Nebulon? I'm not sure. Probably because it's... So, yeah. one of the reasons for it uh, was, you know, Barkwheel and I uh, tackled that uh, iconic in general and sort of figured out where we wanted the save bonuses and some of the other inherent racial bonuses that these races get uh, to go. And we eventually decided that it would be better served in the enhancement tree than in the core race. What D&D edition does Elminster run? Hmm. He probably does a home campaign. I'm going to assume he does a home campaign. The answer, and this is a, a true answer, yeah. is you can find out by going into the dungeon and looking very carefully at the character sheets. Is that true? <laughs> that is true. That's very interesting. Very interesting. I just assume people are running like D&D 8. <laughs> yeah, right. It's not ahead somehow. And so. Okay, uh, let's see. Uh, Faye Hands asks about getting a portal to be able to get to the Forgotten Realms from your airship. Uh, we do have some specific lore restrictions that sort of limit how you get between the various realms and being able to go straight to there from, say, an airship through a, a portal like that would probably fall outside of our ability to deliver to you. Uh, let's see. Is it possible to fix LFM and grouping, Zalthriz asks. I'm assuming you're talking about the change that was actually a deliberate change to fix the double login bug. Uh, for a long time, there was an issue where too much character data was being loaded on initial login. And the way that we were able to resolve that is by splitting it up so that the world sort of uh, who list and such uh, loaded in after you initially loaded in. So what that means is if you're going to go to the LFM panel, you need to go over to the WHO panel first and then let that populate and then you go over to the LFM panel. And uh, like I said, that is a deliberate change. It's not the most elegant way, you know, we recognize to solve that double login bug, but it did clear it up. So uh, that's that's the reason why we made that change. It is on our list that we yeah. first opened that window. It, would, it can populate. Yeah. All right. Can we get a mini Warforged Titan hireling or a pet? <laughs> if I have my way, the answer is yes. <laughs> yeah. No, I know. Uh, yeah. Never say never, right? Yeah. You really call a mini pet a Titan, though? Yeah, I don't know, right? I don't know. Mini Titan? Jumbo yeah. shrimp. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> 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 All right, uh, let's see. Can we start the panel? Can we start the panel with the Hootab as default? You know, I think that that's something we could look into. I think it, we need to make sure that that wouldn't actually end us in the same place regarding the double login bug. But something along those lines, maybe. All right, let's take another couple minutes. Um, can gnomes get warforged mounts? No. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, but uh, speaking, though, you know, we did go for the Forgotten Realm side on the Iconic Gnome. And I know on the Eberron side, we have a lot of people itching to make their Kanith uh, sort of artificer gnomes, things like that. And that is going to be a possibility. Like I say, they do get a bonus to intelligence, yeah. you know, there's, things there's like some that. Good synergy so, there. I mean, they yeah. get uh, bonuses to uh, weapons that align some of those artifice, so there's light repeaters in there, and some melee weapons, even if they're not the hand and the half ones, but you can also get a confidence bonus to crit threat range with those weapons, which artificer can't easily get otherwise, so uh, between that and the intelligence and some of the spell-related things they get, there's some good synergy there. Yep, and I, I believe this is true, they're the first race to get a bonus to throwing hammers. 
I think you're probably the only person. Oh, they don't? No, they did. I don't think so either. I'm not sure. Uh, let's see. Are we going to have goblins because gnomes have bonus versus no. it? Uh, probably not. Uh, they get uh, the deep gnome iconic has an enhancement for favorite enemy goblin, which covers things like hobgoblins. Right. Yep. Right, so yes, so don't and have goblins, it's have exactly the same as the existing. Bugbears and hobgoblins. Yep. Uh, they also, reptilian is a choice as well. Yes. All right, let's see. I guess, like I said, we could say uh, we're targeting February 29th for update 30 here. Stay tuned for more exact details on that. Uh, like I said, we've got some more gifts and some more surprises that we're not previewing in the live stream here because we don't want to spoil it for you uh, regarding, say, the anniversary gifts and that. Um, we'll be back a little bit. Uh, moving on to update 31 next, mm -hmm. we'll probably have more information about what that's going to be. Uh, Fairly soon, Nira, we would imagine, but uh, not today. Anything else you want to add? What else have we got? Uh, I think that's pretty much it. All right, so thank you very much for watching our Update 30 preview here on twitch.tv slash ddostream. This is going to be archived as well on youtube.com slash dungeonsanddragons slash live, and again here on ddostream as well. Uh, you can find our full schedule of events, a uh, full calendar, Sunday to Sunday. We have shows, again, on our Twitch channel. I'll be back next Wednesday for the weekly Wednesday lunchtime live stream. And, uh, yeah, I guess that'll pretty well do it. So uh, wave goodbye, everyone. Thanks very much for joining us. Really appreciate it. Have a great day.